y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. I want to take a little bit of time and look at dimensioning lumber. Often we see how to dimension wider pieces like this and you'll take the plane and you'll transition across them um, and bring them down to thickness. But I had a few people asking me, how do you plane up and dimension thin, small pieces? They're not quite as simple and straightforward as a larger block of wood. So that's what this video is for. So come along, let's take a look at it. So here's the piece we want to dimension down to the correct thickness. It is about an inch and an eighth thick and uh, needs to be brought down to three quarters inch like this piece that's already finished by three inches. Now it has a rough dimension so it's about uh, an eighth inch to a quarter inch thicker uh, and a little bit longer than it needs to be. First off I start by looking at which side I want to take more off of and I like to start on the side that looks the best. And I'll put that up and I'll just bring that side flat and true. Now first off I'm going to grab my four plane which has a cambered iron. That means that it's rounded over rather than being flat and straight. Here looking down the sole you can see that it sticks out more in the middle than it does on the outside. That allows you to take off a large chunk. But it also makes the chunk that comes off uh, rounded so you don't get a smooth cut. But you can take off a lot. Most of the time you'll transition across the wood um, and that allows you to take off a lot very fast but on small pieces like this that can be a pain because at the moment you start it you have to end it. So I like to take it from one end to the other and uh, it takes it off a little slower but it's fairly straightforward. Once I've taken off most of it that I want to I then switch over to a number five um, jack plane and this has a fairly aggressive cut but I'm basically just making sure that I can get one clean curl from one end to the other. That lets me know that I've gotten rid of all the ridges that were created from using the four plane. Once I have it fairly well smooth and I'm getting a curl from one end to the other I will check the board and make sure that it is both flat side to side as well as from end to end. You can use the edge of the plane to give you a, uh, a fairly close estimate. I like to keep mine uh, nice and smooth so that I can make sure that there's no light coming in from underneath. Let's me know, uh, I need to take off a little bit more over here or over there. Once I have that to where I think it's pretty good, I'll put uh, winding sticks on. This tells me if I have a twist. and You can see here I am high on the end closest to me on the left side and farther away on the right side I'm higher. So I know that there's a twist in the board but I don't know exactly where the twist is. What I can do is move the winding sticks in and out to find out exactly where that twist is. And here I can find out that almost all of it is on the far end of the board and in the last couple inches. So I'll just take the plane and take off that far corner. Now with a little bit of doing this you start to learn how much you need to take off in order to get rid of a specific amount of twist. But once I have that corner mostly removed I'll set the winding sticks back up and find out if I got rid of the twist. And you can look along it and booyah that's pretty darn straight. Move the sticks back and forth just to make sure and you have a nice flat smooth surface. Now it's time to joint the surface make sure that everything is taken out. I don't really need to use this long of a plane to joint this surface flat, but I like having that long nose. It allows me to register it on the board before pushing forward rather than it kind of skipping through the first two inches. It just makes it a little easier. Once I get a nice clean curl from one end to the other with the jointing plane, uh, I can grab the number seven, uh, the number four, and smooth it out. Now that I have one surface completely flattened, smooth and uh, and twist free I can work on the edge and I want to make this perfectly flat smooth and 90 degrees to the first edge that I referenced because it was pretty good I could just start with the jointer rather than having to go to the four plane or the number five and just make sure that it is 90 degrees to the reference face now that I have those two edges referenced I can make marks and everything I do is now referenced off of those two faces. I know those two are true, and so if anything else is measured off of them, I know that's true as well. I can use the marking gauge to set the exact, thick, the exact width of the board. 
which on this one I believe is three inches. And then I can start planing that edge down to that line I made with the marking gauge. Now in a lot of these I might have to take off an eighth inch uh, to a quarter inch or more and I might start with the four plane or the number five uh, jack plane but in this case I really only had about a sixteenth inch to take off and so I figured just starting with the jointer was pretty good. I'm starting to get some wisps on the edge as I get close to that marking gauge line and once that happens you know you can slow it down a little bit and just take off another pass or two until those wisps disappear and you're right on that line. So now I have a surface that's flat and both edges that are both parallel and 90 degrees to the original reference face. I can put a marking gauge all the way around the board at its thickness of 3 quarter inch. And you can see I have a little less than a quarter inch to take off. Now that may sound like a lot to take off of the plane but with a cambered iron on the, the four plane, it goes pretty quickly. And here again, I will uh, go from end to end rather than traversing across the grain, just to lessen the amount of uh, damage and skipping that happens when you go across a board that, that's, that is that small. Now, if the board were, say, six inches wide, I'd probably traverse and go across the grain as opposed to with it. But this, I don't have any problem with that. As I start to get closer and closer to that line, I'm keeping more of an eye on that gauge line, making sure that I'm staying away from it. When I get about 16th of an inch away, uh, I stop working with the four plane, and I, I sneak up on that line a little bit more with the uh, number five jack plane. This allows me to get rid of all the ridges caused by the four plane, and get a nice, fairly smooth surface. I'll keep going until I get really close to that marking gauge line and I get a nice curl from one end to the other, smooth surface all the way across. And at this point I'm getting really close to it, I'm starting to see those hairs popping up. So that basically I'm a pass or two away from being right on that gauge line. You can see one of those hairs sticking up right there. And I usually like to finish that up with the jointer just like I did on the other side, going until I get a complete curl from one end to the other, and I make those hairs disappear, getting a nice clean edge. Then a few passes from the smoothing plane, and I have a butter smooth surface, and a piece of wood that is precisely the dimension that I need it to be. And I love feeling the end of it, when that board is nice and sharp and crisp. One down, 37 more to go. So that was fun for me. Uh, 38 boards done, and I've got another 40 or so for this dresser. But uh, I thought it was kind of an interesting video to do. How do you dimension smaller, thinner stock than your normal larger boards? And uh, the process is basically the same, but has a few other little ideas in between. And when you have a little bit of time and you want to enjoy the wood, picking up a hand plane to dimension a few small pieces is something that you can do on just about any project, just to learn to play with one piece and then send the rest of them through the planer and uh, have a little bit of fun in the process. So I hope you like this video. Please let me know in the comments below what questions or thoughts you would have. I'd love to hear them. If you did like it, please hit the like button or subscribe and feel free to check out one of my other videos. You might find something you like. And until next time, have a wonderful day.